Hi there, my name is Bart. Welcome to this video tutorial. We'll be talking about photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is this awesome thing that you can create photographs to make 3D models. I'm going to use these two models to create a 3D model using two types of technologies. One using just my iPhone. Here it is, the iPhone. It's an SE model, which is pretty cheap. And the second I'll be using this DSLR camera that I have here. Um, I have some cool things. So we're going to use a calibration mat for making the objects take the, take taking the, the scan of the objects bigger. So small calibration, big calibration. And what we got here is pretty cool. This slides into here, and this just screws into here. This is an old Japanese tripod that I got in Japan years ago. Use it until this day. Cool thing about it, it just, it just, just slides quickly and you can put it back in. No thingy bobs, which is cool. And it has a small ball head here that I can operate, which is, which is cool because what I do is, I actually take this and mount it like this. That way I have a three-point stabilization here with my arms here and my front side just like this and I can capture really stable footage just using this simple technique. So let's get to scanning. Well the app that we're gonna use is called Clone. Let me just get the calibration object and scanning it. process should take about what well, two to three minutes to take your time as long as you have good lighting you should be fine so you can take your time as long as you have good lighting you should be fine yeah okay that should not happen god damn it i'm actually recording on the iphone while i'm capturing photogrammetry on this and it's stitching on the processor at the same time it's pretty cool about this app that it just stitches on the CPU, GPU, I mean, probably. So anyway, let's get going. Oh, the thing is, this mat shouldn't move. Yeah, so wind, not a good idea. God damn it. Right, let's see how we can solve this. Well, that is a solution, but I don't want to get this in the way. So it's just... Give it a little rotation. Now, the thing is, you can also rotate the mat itself, and you can see that the sphere rotates with it, which is pretty cool. And um, but I think it's better not to rotate the objects because photogrammetry uh, works better when the lighting hasn't changed. But when you spin the model, that the light reflections actually change. Um, all right, let's go. Let's get to it. I'll start record. And all I do now is just move around. So yeah, this is the quality from the 3D model scanned with the smartphone, as you can see. There is a lot of, uh, well, man, it's just meshes that didn't work out, but here's the cool part. Check this out. Check this out. You can look at it in augmented reality. Pretty cool. It just sticks to the mat here. So remember one thing, this is, this is, the quality of the 3D scanned model is not that great if you use it on the desktop, but on the mobile phone, it looks like it's really there. Check this out, this is even cooler. If I take a giant mat like this, it then sticks to this mat here. And I can just look look at the 3D model as if it was there. So it's like copying reality. Impressive stuff, I really like this 3D scanner. It's simple, easy to use, fast, effective. Although the quality could be 
better when compared to desktop experience and using a DSLR which I'll show you in the next part of this video. Now I'm using a different type of software where all you have to do is you don't need any calibration mats all you do is just walk around your object straight from the cloud and this is what we get so as you can see that the, the 3d model hasn't preserved all the little details and the textures are pretty mashed all together um not too impressed by this maybe this is just a preview well photogrammetry software and look at what i got this is 52 pictures taking took with just my standard uh, camera it's an 18 megapixel camera so nothing too fancy and basically from a series of pictures like this which is just me rotating around the object and after processing this this is what you get this is normal quality now for comparison uh, I'll show you how the model looks on the iPhone and how it looks using this commercial software which is capture reality and I'll also show you a free version called call map that does pretty much the same thing it's just free so there's a little bit much little bit more fiddling around with it but it works so I'm gonna uh, now colorize this and then texturize this so I'm gonna switch off the recording because this is really GPU intensive stuff all right Okay, so we're done with the processing and I'm pretty impressed. Uh, reality Capture, Capture Reality, whatever it's called, did a pretty impressive job of actually stitching all this together without me even thinking about it, which is really cool. It shows me all the cameras that it captured and also the, the model, which is, look, turned out really cool. I like the colors, I like that it actually it preserved all these little bits and pieces here. So. I can look in between the model. Uh, this would probably need some work later with some smoothing. But the thing is now, wow, look at this. This is a 11.3 million triangles in this model. That's, that is a lot of models. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this. So this has a simplify tool. Let's just hit it. And change the target triangle to, let's say, 500. 1, 2, 3, 1000. And hit simplify. So the software just runs through it. So this is the final result that I got. It's a render looks pretty cool okay to me so this is capturing reality nice bundle of a package okay so we're going to do exactly the same now in a free software called cool map i'll see you there so this is how cool map looks pretty straightforward nothing too fancy here what you do is you click this button and you select the workspace folder I'll just use this I'll use the image folder which is this and vocabulary tree a vocabulary tree is uh, something that you need to download from the website it's basically something that helps uh, the let me just get into this and uh, I think I have a vocabulary tree here so data type individual quality well i'm not sure about high it's going to crash my computer but let's try running it at actually it's to medium so we're going to compare how mm, how long it took all right see you there so after a couple of minutes we get this message and we can check out our models 
to do that, the best would be to use mesh, mesh mixer. This is the point cloud that we got from this. So we're, miss we're missing a couple of cameras here, but that's pretty much good result for a free software anyway. Let's import our model. So we get a dense and sparse. Let's go into the dense and look at the fused model. Nope, didn't. Sorry, didn't import. Let's have a look at this. Just try to open it in the. Yeah, we need to open the second file. Let's actually just have a look at MeshLab. Maybe MeshLab will be able to preview this better. So this is what we get from uh, call map. Pretty, pretty nice detail. Um, you can see that you can see through the the model, which is good. So I use the same set of images to create this as I did with the paid software, and I'm pretty impressed with this. This is a three million faces and one. 0.8 million vertices which is quite a lot we could uh, optimize this to make it uh, look a lot better so this is just the mesh this is without shading keep the shading on I'm going to try a second version now and try to do it with the high quality setting and see how that will turn out. So if I go to filters now, remeshing and it's called screen poison poison screen rec surface reconstruction. Um, this will do this will basically make the model a lot more less heavy than it was before so this only has 82,000 vertices and 163,000 but the quality is unacceptable so let's get rid of this look at this this is actually interesting i used agisoft photoscan professional trial version and i got pretty impressive results uh, just going through the workflow here which you add photos then you align the photos then you build the dense mesh cloud and once you have the, the dense mesh cloud you can do a lot of cool stuff with this so what would you what normally would you do is convert that dense mesh, mesh cloud into something mm, that is a mesh basically build mesh so in order to do that you can do that in a separate software which is interesting i want to set, set this test this out because mesh lab 2016 has a really cool feature that will enable you to build from this dense mesh cloud uh, a mesh model and we'll compare the results if agisoft internal mesh thing is better than the mesh labs thing so when you go into the settings, you, you can just go to filters, and this is this is actually really confusing, but it's called uh, they changed it. It's now called screen poison poison surface recon rec reconstruction, and it's a really fast algorithm. So that's the thing that's impressive us all about it that can do a bunch of things so i usually set the recon reconstruction depth to 12 which is high quality you can go more but you won't see much of a difference so i'll just hit apply and let them let the graphics card run through this now this this is actually really intensive so we will wait a moment here and see how how it turns out a few moments later check this out this is the final version that I got uh, basically after bu hitting build texture from the workflow this thing just looks amazing in Aggie soft 
And what I like about Agisoft, they give you actually the, the ability to work with your photographs and to export this and see if you, you, you actually use this in any, in any meaningful way. As the other software usually has it blocked or you have to unlock it in some weird way. So, okay, yeah, this, this makes all sense. I didn't take, you see, it's missing the little parts here from under the model, but I didn't take those pictures. I only took pictures just from one angle, just went going round, going around the model. I should have went, went around here. Then I would have more detail coming from this side, which you can see. Well, it's not, it doesn't make that even much of a difference, which is pretty good. So there you go. Um, so after exporting it to a ply file, that's a ply file, that's how you call it. It also exports along with the model texture, which you can see here. It's crazy texture, but it works. It's like computer generated everything. Everything is known and aligned properly. And there you go. There's our scan 3D model. This can be 3D printed or exported into any um, other software for development. And nice thing is, it doesn't. It's not crazy amount. It doesn't take insane amounts of memory. This this particular guy is 13 megabytes, which isn't a lot. So yeah, Agisoft like it like what you're doing this is pretty impressive and i like also that you have batch process which was missing from from reality capture i couldn't figure it out okay i hope you learned a little bit about photogrammetry its possibilities uh what are the differences between doing it on a powerful desktop computer uh with a good powerful graphics card and doing it on this little guy which is also pretty impressive because this is just the easiest way to do it there's no there's no easier way than to get 3d models than just using your phone okay i'll see you guys in the next lesson tutorial so after exporting it to a ply file that's a ply file that's how you called it it also exports along with the model texture which you can see here the crazy texture but it works it's like computer generated everything everything is known and aligned properly and there you go there's our scan 3d model this can be 3d printed or exported into any um, other software for development and nice thing is it doesn't it's not crazy amount it doesn't take insane amounts of memory this this particular guy is 13 megabytes which isn't a lot so yeah agisoft i like it i like what you're doing this is pretty impressive and I like also that you have batch process, which was missing from, from reality capture. I couldn't figure it out. Okay, I hope you learned a little bit about photogrammetry, its possibilities. Uh, what are the differences between doing it on a powerful desktop computer uh, with a good, powerful graphics card and doing it on this little guy, which is also pretty impressive because this is just the easiest way to do it. There's no, there's no easier way than to get 3D models than just using your phone. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next lesson tutorial.